Fitness and Fury. I'm going to be short, sweet, and simple. This fight right here, you better be preparing. You better train your, your butt off as if your life depends on it. Because your life depends on it. Don't go up missing. <laughs> I'm going to smash your fucking face in, you prick. How about that for a fucking message? Yeah, we have Shakur Stevenson and some of the best, you know, this great heavyweight prospect named Jared Anderson, who I think is going to be heavyweight champion. We have a ton of fighters. How many fights does he have? Jared's, I think, 9-0. to know. How old is he? Nine knockouts. He's 22. Ooh. Yeah. Um, one of the most decorated heavyweight amateurs. He was, you know, going to be on the Olympic team, and he decided to come out early. Just remarkable. You'll see that Tyson Fury has had him as his sparring partner and uh, repeatedly has said, this guy is amazing. What do you think about what's going on with Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder? Do you think that Tyson knew that he was going to have to defend against Deontay and that this whole Anthony Joshua thing, because that's what Joshua thinks, that he knew the whole time that he was, wasn't going to be able to make that fight and they were just letting them get all hyped up about it but knew he had to really face Deontay Wilder because of the lawsuit. No, it's 100% not true. Not true. No, there was an arbitration going on, and they were actively trying to, you know, and I know this on firsthand knowledge, they were actively trying to make sure that they, um, he was trying to get out of the third fight. He thought that he had a contractual right not to have to fight that third fight because it had to happen at a certain time. Um, and they are, I mean, the arbitration is confidential, but I know what was going on and I know that they were actively trying to make sure that, um, he didn't have to fight that third fight. Mm. So I don't, I don't believe in the conspiracy theory. I think Tyson Fury is, he's call him whatever you want, but that's a man right there. He'll fight anyone. That's a fact. I mean, he's, if you ever see him live in a gym, I mean, everyone who's watching the sparring's jaw is on the floor to watch this guy as big as he is with back fat. <laughs> I, mean, I do love that he gets fat. That back fat yeah. is like some stubborn, These they look like two ham hocks and you see him and you're like, the fuck? That's beer. It's, he moves like a fucking gazelle. He is, there's, I've never seen anything like it. Lennox has watched him and be like, like this, I can't believe what I'm seeing. He's just remarkably gifted. And, you know. Well, he's always moved like that. From the time he was young, he's moved like that. So it's just part of his style. Now he can punch a little bit, though. Yeah, well, now he, he sets down and he moves forward yeah. instead of just trying to box and box and box. You know, like, that was the key to the Wilder fight was the 12th round. 12th round of the first fight yes. where he had Wilder on his heels and he realized, okay, this is how you fight this guy. Yeah. You go after him because if you just try to move around, then he can move forward and set his, set his punches in and put his weight behind his punches like he did in that 12th round and dropped him. But then when Tyson got up and then had Deontay backing up, as soon as he had Deontay backing up, it's almost like he was like, oh, this is how you fight this yes. guy. And he can't fight backing up, in my humble opinion. Here I am again. This is my humble yeah. opinion. With all, <laughs> he can fight backing up. It's just not his best. It's not his best position to be in. He's got that, what Teddy Atlas calls the eraser. You know, like all mistakes erased with one shot. Though. Yeah, and I mean, that's another guy. It might not look as conventional, but I mean,. I've, he puts people, he pulls the plug on their yeah. consciousness in a way that, you know. Ortiz, hit him in the forehead. Flatlined yeah, them. That Brr. was it. And that guy, that guy, Ortiz, by the way, he fought a fighter that I managed with James, um, Brian Jennings, who's super tough. And um, he got hit with bombs, Ortiz, in that fight. And he was just like, all right, what's for lunch? All right, yeah. now give me dinner. He just is a tough hombre, and he got... You know, and that was a competitive fight. That second Ortiz Wilder fight was oh, a competitive yeah. fight. Well, and the first one, he almost took Wilder out. Yeah, yeah, he, he had, had him Wilder hurt. in real trouble. He had him hurt in the garden. Yeah, put up uh, Deontay Wilder KOs, Luis Ortiz, because that is one of my favorite KOs ever. Because it, it was just, blap, one shot out of nowhere, sweat sprays, and he walks off. He just pivot and walked off because he knew. He's like the guy. He's like he's like Babe Ruth or Mickey Mantle or one of these home run hitters that right off the bat, if you watch him, he turns his back and he's like 
it's yep. over. And yep. I think what happened with Tyson Fury is he felt the same way. And Tyson got up. Tyson got up. <laughs> <laughs> like Lazarus. Oh, my he God. He got up and won the round. That's what's crazy. Yeah, and you hear the announcers yeah. are just, they think it's a wrap. Well, he's lying on his back with his hands over his head. Where many referees, that's where it gets subjective, right? Many referees would have just called it right there. It yeah. made me believe in a higher power to watch him get up the way he did. <laughs> <laughs> he just like was like, all right, I'm getting up. And I'm, it was crazy. Yeah, it's he's an unusual person. Well, yeah, yeah, bag it up a little bit. Watch this. I love this knockout. Just blap. Sets it up Bam. right on the top of the head. And just walks away. I mean, look at Ortiz's arms paralyzed. He's, like, trying to, like, fit his mouthpiece in. But look at how it sets it up. Bam. Watch him turn around. Yep. Just pivoted his career on paper. He's the most extraordinary knockout artist in the history of the heavyweight yep. division. Yep. No one has had a record like his. Yep. He literally has only won one fight by decision, the mm -hmm. Stavern fight. Mm -hmm. That's it. Every other dude he beat went night-night. Watch this. That's crazy. <laughs> so, That's crazy. James Prince calls me one day. He's like, this guy Bermain Stavern wants us to represent him and negotiate his rematch against Wilder. And I said to Jay, Sure, we want to do that because this guy went the distance. <laughs> so the problem was is that Stavern was represented by Don King. So, you know, we had done so much business with Don, and Don kind of knew not to. We had like an unspoken understanding that you can't fuck around too much with us. I had been involved suing Don. James had been involved suing Don over the years. So we had this one meeting before the fight where we're in a hotel room in Brooklyn where Don is trying to grind down Stavern's purse. <laughs> and he finally, he, we finally negotiated these terms and Don kept on bringing up, well, if he wins the fight and if he wins the fight, <laughs> we were all looking at each other. And I think the three of us looked at each other and burst out laughing at the same time. <laughs> we knew we were all, you know, Stavern's a big, strong guy. He came out in the rematch and while there was like this is the one guy that i went the distance with he blew him out in yeah. the first round in in a way that i was like this guy is gonna get hurt stay down you know it was a wild first round too like he threw everything behind those punches yeah like pull that up because it's the way he knocked him out was so ridiculous like look, Boy, like, look, look at that one two i mean come on son and then watch this, this. Boom. I mean, come on. Dude, just show that again. That one two is insane. Look at this. Boom. I think he gets up, if I remember. Yeah, he got up. He got up, and he was fucked. So he's in real oh trouble. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. He was like, I told him I didn't want to do this again. Uh, what does he say to the ref right there? I don't know. I don't know what he said. Don't but he's in real don't trouble make here. make me do it again. And look at... Look at yeah, look at his hands down. I mean, that guy's a badass. He stands there with his hands down like a charging bull. He just stood there with his hands down like, why, would you really want some of this? And Stavern got up again. That's what's crazy. He almost made it out of the first round. Here we go. Wiping his gloves off. Like, referee's giving him plenty of time. Look at Deontay just runs towards him. Boom. Oh. That's it. Look, now he's fighting off the referee. Get off me. <laughs> Look, I would never. I mean, yeah. to, to get up. To get up from two punches like that. But it's it's not just I mean, that. It's like knockdowns. the brazenness. You know, like Deontay like, had zero fear of this guy. Look at this. Step to the side. Bang, bang, bang. I mean, totally unnecessary. I'm trying to find myself and Prince and King. We must have been on the other side of the ring in the crowd because after the, the second knockdown, I remember Don King turned around and looked at us and started laughing. <laughs> it was terrible. But, I mean, and he see, represented them. He promoted him. I, he didn't represent anything okay, right. but himself. <laughs> <laughs> Only in America. Oh, my God. But, you know, I could watch that. And be like, look, we're we're laughing because it's you know we're laughing in awe of both of these guys because to, you have to be a badass to get knocked down like that and get up and get up and want more twice twice. 
I don't yeah. care what you're saying to the ref, shaking your head. So I, I will always be in love with with men that are willing to risk that much. Yeah. Because what's never been lost on me, not to get too introspective or poetic about it, it was always um, like even with Bermain Severn, it was a quick representation. But James and I got him paid. And, you know, this is a sport that plucks – you know, the most disenfranchised people most of the time out of the worst circumstances, out of the poorest neighborhoods. And it's like the fucking Wild West. Yeah. You know, 